thought that says you have chat GPT-3, which blew people away. You had 3.5, which was a huge improvement. You have GPT-4, that also took us to the next level. And now you're working on GPT-5. The proliferation of this technology is still limited. So we're still using it in a very specific domain, very specific use cases. We haven't really seen the proper applications that are world changing. Why are we continuing to push across the bigger, the better, uh, you know, the, the larger models that we're seeing right now? What's the logic behind that? Can you explain that to us? Well, I think for that exact reason, as you said, we have not yet seen as much world changing. Uh, applications we like. Maybe we've seen some. Um, there are a lot of people who use these services and get value out of them, but but not as much as we'd like. And and I think the reason is um, the current technology that we have is like, I mean, it's like that very first cell phone with the black and white screen that can only display those like numbers, and you know, it just didn't do much. But there was enough in there. You're like, hmm, I can make a call. That's that's cool. And at the time, that seems great. And then it took us. I don't know how long from that, but many decades from that to the iPhones we have today. And the thing we have today is incredible. And it took a massive amount of scaling in all these different ways to get there. Um, but we have now is like unimaginable at the time of those like first primitive cell phones. And I think that's, that's what we have to push forward. We're at this barely useful cell phone, but people still like making phone calls. It turns out. And if you can, make a better way for them to do it so they can go walk around the world while they do it. Sure, that's great. But that's not what we want to deliver. We want to deliver the iPhone 16 or 15 or whatever the current one is. And what's the timeline to reach the iPhone 16 from the current... Bien, esto es súper interesante. Es decir, eh, ChatGPT fue una revolución el año pasado. Bueno, GPT-3 lleva un poquito antes. GPT-4 ahora mismo. Y bueno, eh, como bien dice... Eh, realmente, más allá de la, del boom inicial y, bueno, pequeñas aplicaciones que se han hecho, pero tampoco es que haya cambiado el mundo radicalmente, excepto, bueno, ciertos tipos de tareas que todas están relacionadas con, con la generación de textos o generación de código, que sigue siendo lo mismo. Eh, se está acelerando el proceso, pero no hay una, una aplicación pues como ese iPhone 16 que sorprenda a todo el mundo, pero... Todo lleva demasiado tiempo, no podíamos esperar que en un simple año con la gente está entendiendo los casos de uso que se pueden utilizar y es cierto que todavía les queda muchísimo por hacer y sobre todo porque no hay potencial ni energético ni tecnológico para una alta demanda de, de toda la gente solicitando pues, eh, a los modelos grandes de lenguaje pues, que hagan o generen el siguiente token. Motorola that we have. You gotta give us... You gotta be a little patient. That's like a, a, you know, it took the world a while to do that last time around. So give us some time. But I will say, I think in a few more years, it'll be much better than it is now. And in a decade, it should be pretty remarkable. And if we're going to compare uh, GPT-4 to GPT-5, uh, because you're at the cusp of this, you're actually seeing it at the forefront. What is the difference? Like if I'm excited about GPT-5, what should I be excited about? I, I, I was sort of laughing a little bit because this is going to sound like an annoying answer, but I think it is the important part. It's going to be smarter. There are all of these other things, you know, we can talk about, it'll be better at these kind of tasks, it'll be multimodal, it'll be faster, what, what, you know, who knows what. But the, the thing that I think really matters is it's going to be smarter. And... Bien, vemos que la siguiente gran evolución de GPT-5 es que va a ser más inteligente, que es lo que... Lo cierto, porque es decir, que sea más rápido, depende de la tarjeta gráfica o la GPU donde lo estés corriendo, más rápido, más lento, etcétera, pero que la respuesta sea más inteligente, sobre todo en casos de, imaginaros, creación de código, que aunque ha evolucionado mucho y cosas sencillas que le pides en código, te lo resuelven, incluso modelos mucho más pequeños que, que GPT-4, pero cuando le pides cosas ya más complicadas o el siguiente paso o una serie de pasos entrelazados es cuando la cosa se empieza a complicar porque si uno falla, el resto de los agentes pues eh, se cae por sí solo, entonces la inteligencia es algo, es algo vital. This is a bigger deal than it sounds, right? Because the, what, what makes these models so magical is that they're, they're general. Um, and so if it's a little bit better, if it's a little bit smarter, That means it's a little bit better at everything. And the thing that I think is most exciting is 
it's not like this model is going to get a little better at this task and not really better at these or, you know, it's not that it's, it's because we're going to make the model smarter. It's going to be better at everything across the board. Have you watched the movie Freaky Friday where these two people switch places? I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it. So, so the, the thesis or the idea of the movie was two people switched places. They moved into different bodies and they lived each other's lives. Let's assume today is um, Freaky Tuesday and you become the Minister of Artificial Intelligence of the UAE. If you were going to take one regulatory decision for this country, knowing what you know, seeing what you see, what would you do? To take my job for a day? I would, I would love to do that, just for a day. You have fun with that. It's not as easy as it looks. Like no, no, I know it's very hard, but I'd love to experience it. That'd be great. Um, anytime you want to switch, I, I, I will <laughs> greatly look forward to that. Um, what I would do... Uh, That was a curveball, by the way. No, no, no. It's a, it's a really thoughtful question. I'm trying to give a thoughtful answer. Um, I think what I would do is try to, and I know you've done some work in this direction, and I, I really appreciate it, but I, I would try to find a way to create more of a regulatory sandbox where people could experiment with this technology and... And, and be able to figure out sort of like dream, imagine, whatever you want to call it, what the world could look like. Um, and then I would try to see what makes sense and what doesn't and, and write the regulation around that. I think it's very hard. I think we have to try and we're going to anyway, but I think it's very hard to get all of the regulatory ideas right in a vacuum. Um, and if there was a sort of a contained way that I could find a way to like give people the future, and let them experiment it with it, uh, and then see what made sense, uh, what what went really wrong, what went really right, and write the regulation around that. That that seems like an interesting experiment. So, so I have great news. Um, we already have a platform here called the Regla that does that. The only issue is, I think it hasn't proliferated yet to be truly global. Um, one thing that I think we should do is actually look at how we can take it to the next level and use a specific use case there for AI rather than just broad technologies, right? Can I change my answer? I thought one. You can change your answer a hundred times. Go on. I still think that's a good thing to do, but since I only have one day, a better thing to do. Okay. Um, one thing that I have been thinking about, so the world is going to try all of these different regulatory approaches. There will be your sandbox. I think it's awesome that you have that. Other people do other things. Um, but we are going to, and I, I think that's actually really good, but we are going to need, I believe at some point, some sort of a global system um, the example that I've given in the past is the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency, for what happens with the most powerful of these systems, because they will have truly global impact. And what sort of auditing, what sort of safety measures do we want in place before you can deploy uh, like a super intelligence or, you know, however you want to call an AGI. And I think for a bunch of reasons, the UAE would be so well set up to be a leader in the discussions around that. I would, I would like host a one day conference with leaders from around the world to brainstorm about that. Consider it done. We'll do it. Um, okay. Thank you. I'd love to come. Uh, I'd like to just move on 